British Touring Car Championship goes back to 1958 when the series featured separate classes for different types of saloon car. But 1991 saw the start of the BTCC as we now know it, a one-class system with simplified rules that created a level playing field for every driver. The cars, which are now known as the Super Tourers, had to pass various specifications. Cars were limited to two litres, a maximum of six cylinders, with a rev limit of 8,500 RPM. The body shell had to be identical to the car that's driven on the road, with a maximum length of 4.2 metres, a minimum weight of 975 kilograms, and with at least 25,000 models having been built. The championship point system worked like this. Only the first 10 positions scored, with the points as follows. 15, 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, 3, 2, and 1. There was an extra point awarded for drivers starting pole position in either race or leading a lap of the feature race. So, with all the rules sorted out, the new era of touring cars could begin. It all started in 1991. Where better to begin this new age of touring cars than Silverstone, the home of British racing, where the crowds had gathered this time to watch the touring cars and the likes of John Clellan, Steve Soper and Will Hoy fight it out on the track. And 1991 is good. And it's a searing start from Will Hoy on the left. Into Cox Corner, three abreast. It's Will Hoy, BMW, Clellan, Soper, Palmer in his BMW. And there's Palmer on the left, he's turning in, thump! He's hit Andy Rouse, off! Off goes the Toyota. What a start for his first Toyota race. Bad luck for Andy Palmer, but this turned out to be a race dominated by the fastest starter, who later proved to be the fastest finisher. The last corner. His car sounds OK, and Will Hoy wins a brilliant race, provided he just gets across the line, which he does now to take 24 points. Well, it's obviously great to win the first round of the British Championship, Touring Car Championship. It, it, it's, uh, it, it's not being blase, but it was obviously, I didn't have the pressure that perhaps the second and third and fourth cars had because they were mixing it. So from that point of view, it was um, not hard, but it's a fantastic feeling. I'm, I'm really pleased for everybody. Round two took the tour to Snetterton, where Will Hoy didn't get off to a dream start. The BMWs trailing the Vauxhalls in the opening stages. But Hoy soon got the better of Jeff Allen and John Cleland and was once again the man to beat. A little confusion at the finish, though, as Hoy was shown the chequered flag a lap early. Well, the flag marshals might have lost count, but Will Hoy hadn't and drove the BMW hard through the last lap to make sure. It was two victories out of two now for Hoy, 48 points and a commanding lead in the championship. On to Donington for round three, and Will Hoy had a problem. The decibel levels on the car breached championship regulations, and feverish activity in the BMW paddock wasn't enough to avoid a 10-second penalty for Hoy going into the race. But the changes made to the BMW exhaust soon backfired. Into the pits comes Hoy. Well, he won at Silverstone, he won at Snetterton. 48 points put him in the lead of the championship, but he's clearly not going to get any more points today. This is it, last corner, Soper locks on the left front. Cleland is right behind him, they can see the chicken bag, and Steve Soper is the man who takes it. Thruxton next, and round four brought more problems for Will Hoy. Will Hoy jumps the start, he could be penalised for that, and he stopped, gets away, and it's a terrific start by John Cleland in the Vauxhall, he just drives straight between Will Hoy and his teammate Jeff Allen, and he takes the lead. And in the lead, it's John Cleland, tucked up tight behind him is his teammate, his Vauxhall teammate, that's it! It's a great day for BMW, Soper is almost home, then it's Bailey second, Leslie third, there they are, Will Hoy in fourth position, Soper wins, and that's another 24 points to give him a colossal championship lead. 
At Alton Park in round five, the BMWs were still in dominating form, with British touring car debutant Joe Winkelhock beginning to show his potential by starting the race in second position. The German was in commanding mood, which couldn't be said for his teammate and rival for the championship, Steve Soper. And Soper is really charging to try and catch the Vauxhall and get past it. Into the avenue, round cascades, down to fourth, he's going off, he's going off! Straight into the tire wall! Now, why on earth did that happen? That's not like Steve Soper. Something must have broken, surely. Well, he, he seems to be all right. He's out of the car. There it is, across the water. And that is Winkelhock going up into Shell. Well, what a development. And here's a replay. And watch our cameraman as we head straight towards him. Oh. He's a runner. And one very bent BMW. Burden Row leads Nuttall for seventh. Burden Row in the Toyota and into the tyre wall. Nuttall goes through and he's got a tyre jammed under the front of his car. And there's tyres all over the place. There's one of them. Into Deer Leap. That's the last corner coming up. And Winklehock wins at Alton Park and takes the championship lead from his teammate, Steve Soper. Huge crowds gathered at Brands Hatch for round six of the championship. David Leslie started in pole, but it was Hoy and Winklehock who took the lead. Ian Cowan's race ended prematurely, and Joe Winklehock was at the centre of controversy when he shunted Leslie. As the German went to collect another win, the Scot was not amused. He had no chance of getting past there. No opportunity whatsoever. Like, I didn't get him past Will Hoy unless Will made a mistake. Will made a mistake, I took advantage of it. There was no opportunity whatsoever for him to pass there. For me, there was no possibility there to, to pass Leslie. And especially in this corner where was the extent, sorry for Leslie, it was a little bit of misunderstanding because especially in this corner, I was really much quicker than Leslie. So sorry for, uh, for Leslie. A 10-minute break and the drivers were back in their cars for round seven. Once again, the BMWs were at the front, but the Germans' luck was about to change. And here are the leaders, Winkelhock, Super, Hoy, we're with Winkelhock and he's going off! He's going off! Straight into the, straight into the arm go, Donner and Blitzen, says Winkelhock, and that's his race over. No points for him. And Win Percy's going for it again, and Hoy's off! Hoy's off! Straight into the tar barrier. The two major contenders out of action, it was Steve Soper who coasted home. At a sunny Pembrey in Wales, the Ford Mondeo made its first appearance. Spearheading the Ford Challenge were veteran Andy Rouse and New Zealander Paul Radisic. For Rouse, though, the comeback didn't last, as he was virtually manhandled out of the race. Oh, basically, I got run into by John Clellan, Will Hoy, Bailey, Oda, and one or two others you could mention. I mean, that's just bloody pathetic. I want to go motor racing, not stock car racing, thank you. Meanwhile, Winklehock, professional as ever, completed another win on the Welsh circuit, while at Silverstone in round nine, the show kept rolling on. But Julian Bailey is flying. He's attacking his teammate, Will Hoy. In fact, he's really attacked him. That's it, off goes Will Hoy. Skating to a standstill on his roof. It's a good thing Will's strapped in. The car upside down is a Toyota, with Will Hoy crawling out of it. And here's another one, Tim Harvey. Alex Portman's BMW and Tim rolls it too. And out of Woodcote to cross the line goes Keith O'Dor, and O'Dor wins in the Nissan Primera. Delighted. Brands Hatch in round 13. Leslie and Winklehock clash again. Now we're looking back from Leslie's car. Winklehock is third. He's leaning on Leslie at 110 miles an hour as they go into Druids with Steve Soper on the right. There he is, down to Graham. Nineteen ninety-nine, and the usual suspects are challenging for BTCC glory. The Frenchman Laurent Aiello was looking to make an impact in his first season, but it was the Inter Championship this afternoon. Sure, Tomo. 
The car, the Nissan Premier and the Michelin tyres were spot on. They're absolute dream. I'll kiss the baby. This thing has been a long time coming for all of us. And for being the first independent ever to win in British touring cars, Matt Neal's team were awarded £250,000 by Toka, the championship organisers. But by round eight at Brands Hatch, Laurent Aiello was establishing himself as the front runner in the championship. It's Aiello, then Plato, then Rydell in third. That's David Leslie right past our bumper. We're on board with independent Matt Neal. And look, Radamaka, Radamaka off in the gravel. That's the second time in two races. I'm half after 30. I'm kicking something on the steering wheel. Well done, Laurel. Thank you. Back in daylight for round 25 at Silverstone, it was the two Nissan teammates hoping for a knockout blow on the other. Laurent Aiello and David Leslie were both up for the title. The race was a disappointment though, stopped eventually because of the rain. So the championship was decided by default, as four points were awarded to each driver, which put Aiello out of reach and delivering a debut season championship for the Frenchman. Not quite a vintage finale, but a deserved championship for Aiello. Millennium year promised to be the closest fourth in the BTCC. Not even the drivers could agree on a clear-cut favourite. Uh, Richard Ryder, Manu, uh, Ivan. Honda, Ford or Vauxhall and any of the drivers in it. I think my friend uh, Thompson. I think it's just far too close to call. I would certainly choose Matt to win the, win the title this year. Ivan, if I, had, if I had to tip somebody, then it's good to be me. Yeah. But did Alain Menu know something we didn't? His poll at Brands Hatch in round one gave us a few hints. Ready for a start, everyone on the rim limit, and they're away, and Ricard Rydell's made a great start, dancing behind, right behind Alain Menu. Right on the outside of him, Bavard Muller is going very well as well, side by side, fourth position, Matt Neal just held. Oh, and there's a, there's a spinner and a half, that's Tarquini. Is it now? It's James Thompson, James Thompson, a big spin and a great save. Trying to pick up position again, Reed just slips past him. He's been very quick in testing, and he's crossed the line, and he's taken the win. And a menu for Ford. It was a great start for Menu in this championship. It was in round two, though, that things really livened up. The safety car was called on when Alan Morrison's race was cut short just after Sterling Corner. But for James Thompson, it was even worse. That's James Thompson. James Thompson piled up backwards onto one of the tyre walls. That's a very, very big off indeed. The whole back of that car is missing. That was over the cross of Dingle Dell. Oh dear, I mean, that was in the camera position as well. I mean, James will be taken to the medical center immediately and checked out. He's been winded, really. I think that's probably what's affecting him most. Reed on the right-hand side, Plato on the left. Reed tucks in, Plato moves to cover down to Paddockill Bend, and Reed shovels him from behind. Reed helps him down the hill. Are there any questions? Get out of my way. I'll pass you or I will go through you. Now, here's a... They're ganging up on him, one after the other. That's Reed on the inside, Menu on the outside. Right, Bell, three abreast. This isn't going to work. Down towards bottom bend. Be careful, boys. The paperwork will be hell if you take each other out. Menu's ducked inside. Rydell almost got it wrong. Rydell cuts back. So Reed is still the lead forward behind Plato. Menu on the left, Rydell on the right. Rydell slips through. Very, very smooth. Yeah. Jason Plato cruising around clearways. That's the last corner. He could coast at home from here. It's all downhill. Anthony Reed holding him off. And he hit the grass. Unbelievable. Moved the car over to say hello to the pit guys and celebrate and almost lost it.
There's the boy. You can see the smile through the helmet from here. He seems just modestly happy with that. Peter Cox stood in for James Thompson at Donington for rounds three and four. The three Ford drivers were in superb form as the pit stop timings proved crucial. Now where's Rydell? There's Menu, there's Rydell to the left. This is gonna be close, this is gonna be friendly. That tests the friendship. And Menu just sneaks out in front of Rydell. Rydell trying to look it away past down the hill. As you say, Menu still on cold tires. This is gonna be focusing through the Craner curves for the first time. Menu cannot afford to lift off, stands on the gas. Reed says, I'll have a bit of this as well. Menu's been held up. Reed puts his nose down the inside, shoulder to shoulder. Reed doesn't get past, picks up a bollard souvenir on the way through. No prize, but he does get the stick. They're the last two corners. No one can stop him now. Doesn't even use all of the curves. Takes the checker flag. Well done, Alan. At Thruxton, Ivan Muller had already taken round five when round six started with a bang. And that's one of the Fords off. It's Rydell. Rydell off in a very big way. Leslie slides through on the inside. He's off. Leslie spun. Neil's off with him. They're going over 100 miles an hour amazingly no major contact that was a huge moment that's jason plato the race leader his teammate and his left hand indicator is on and we know what that means i think it must be a faulty indicator switch that is not motor racing in my view and the sort of jason plato would ordinarily expect to do and he gets an acknowledgement it's a bit like a couple of truck drivers on the m1 10 4 good buddy thanks a lot i owe you a beer jason plato moving to one side and plainly Team orders working all the way through for the Vauxhall team. You can complain about team orders, you can complain that Muller perhaps was gifted this win, but you cannot criticise Vauxhall for the performance of these cars. Vauxhall absolutely dominant this afternoon. Muller and Plato won too. Well done, guys. We're here to win the championship for Vauxhall, and that's our priority, and that's the only thing we're here to do. Uh, Jason did a fantastic job out there. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're here to win the championship, and it's important to finish one and two. Of course, we all want to win races. They're hard enough to win, let, let alone having to give them away. But, you know, Evan's not happy about the situation, or, you know, he doesn't like to win races that way. But, you know, i just got to keep his fingers crossed. One day it'll be my turn. At Silverstone in round 12, Anthony Reid was on the receiving end through no fault of his own. Ducks on the inside again. James Thompson's part of this as well. Thompson and Radamaka side by side. He's touched him. He's spun. Radamaka. Ouch! Oh, that hurt. Pile driver. There you see Radamaka Reed. Thompson positioned himself to get inside Radamaka. There was contact, but James didn't lift off. He kept pushing the box all round. Goes through that polystyrene track side. But what an impact. And at Croft in round 14, Plato's throttle jammed open right behind Tarquini. Unbelievable! <laughs> By round 21 at Alton Park, it was obvious Ford was going to win the manufacturer's title. But who would take the driver's championship? I'm Anthony Reid, and I'm going to win the championship. He would like to win it because he hasn't done it yet, but uh, I'm going to win a championship. But Rydell's chances took a knock at the very start. Anthony Reid on the left. Ricard Rydell switches to the left and he hits Alain Menu. Rydell and Menu touch. Rydell is wounded, he's out. Reid is still through, he's leading. Rydell has stopped in the middle of the track. Has everyone fed past? Yes, they have no one of the... One of the Alfa Romeos, that's Ferrier, he's been caught up in that, clipped somebody as well, been turned to the infield. Makes it look easy. Been a very, very good drive from Anthony Reid, can't take it away from him, he was a little bit lucky, he was the pole man, but it's worked for him. And up and over the strike, and the chequered flag for Anthony Reid, just the job. It all came down to the last two rounds at Silverstone, a showdown, but not at dawn, a triangular shootout between Menu, Reid and Rydell. Neil and Menu very close. Jason Plato. Menu is off. Menu is spinning. Can he hold it? Menu is off. And Plato. Jason Plato has collected him on the turn into Beckett's. And that's that's off. That's the end of his race. Coming out of Abbey. Jack 
position was critical. He got the drive up the hill. Oh, look at this! That Tarquin, he tries to do exactly the same thing, and it doesn't work, and more impact! Ah, that's Anthony Reid. That's Anthony Reid. That's his championship hopes out. And here's a man within striking distance of the checkered flag and a race win. Yes, guys. Yes, 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 yes! Yes, indeed. Uh, that was uh, Christensen coming across the line there in first position. Nice drive. Ricard Rydell muscles his way back to second. He needs those points. And talking of needing points, Anthony Reid staggering across the line in seventh position. Nightfall at Silverstone and the floodlights go on around the track for the last and deciding race. But for Rydell, the challenge is over as problems with his car meant he had to retire even before starting. It was now between Reed and Menu. That's Reed right ahead of us. Anthony's trying to defend. Vincent is trying to ease his way around. There's a left and a right coming up here. There's the left, here's the right, and Reed is around. I don't know if there was contact, but Reed sliding across the track and off and in the gravel. Well, that's awful. Anthony Reed, is, his championship is gone. And those faces really tell the story that has really shot the fox. And really, what a moment for Alan Menu en route now to his second British Touring Car Championship. There are the eyes just concentrating, keep it together. All other obstacles have been removed in the form of his teammates. That is the last corner Alan Menu will drive in a super touring car before he takes the championship. Yes, 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 yes. Nice stuff. Congratulations to Alain Menu, the 2000 champion. And don't forget Tom Christensen as well, the winner of this race by a very healthy margin. Tell us, how are you feeling? Much better than 97. It's amazing. I mean, on the, I think I started to cry with two corners to go on that last lap. Just amazing, you know, after that first race where I went off, and then I knew I had to finish in the first three. And for Anthony Reid not to finish better than fifth, I'm very, very happy. Two thousand and one brought in a new look to British touring cars. Not exactly dodgems, but just as exciting. More of the car's components were controlled this year, which reduced the overall cost of touring cars. Though the performance of the cars themselves was not affected. It was Vauxhall who provided the main contenders for the crown in 2001. Jason Plato and his teammate and rival, Frenchman Van Muller. Lights are on, ready for a start. Revs are up, green and they're away. That's the view from Bennett. That's James Thompson right ahead of us. And look right in the middle there, that's Jackson Plato. Great start from Plato, really nuzzling up behind Muller. Muller has held onto it. Muller still in the lead. Plato and James Thompson side by side. Thompson on the right, Plato on the left, up into Druids for the first time. Jason Plato just nuzzling past James Thompson there. Thompson will have to be careful, he doesn't get forced wide. That's Steve Soper in the first of the Peugeots, putting him under real pressure down into bottom bend. Matt Neal, that's Matt Neal being turned sideways into bottom bend. That was the fourth of the Vauxhalls. Let's have another look. And look at that, Thompson. He thought he could have gone the long way around Steve Super into Paddockle Bend. Super is really, well, let's call it shoe booting, but it's giving him a little bit of an insight and showing that the Peugeot really is going to be a car that will challenge Vauxhall later this year. Listening to Plato at work, now building up through the gears. On board with Muller now, and that's what he likes to see. Absolutely nothing in front of him except the checkered flag. Evan Muller takes the first race win of the year. Second place, Jason Plato, and third, James Thompson. It soon became a fight between Muller and Plato. Muller did the double at Alton Park. Then Plato got his own double at Silverstone. And it was Muller again at the double at Mondello Park. Okay, that's it. Well done, mate. Well done. Well done, guys. Good job. At Knock Hill, Muller would have less to shout about. Lights are still red green, and away they go. And Jason Plato has made a cracking start this time. He's not going to waste that pole position. Ivan Muller is trying to do something about it, but can't. So it's Plato, then it's Muller, then it's Thompson. A little bit of a touch there from his teammate Bennett. Erdos right behind. 
huge gaggle of cars just streaming down the hill. Mercifully, everyone through cleanly, it appears. Shedden made a good start as well, and the lead production car. Plenty of those apex markers getting knocked off by the field first time around. Up through Clark. Plato still in the lead. Up the hill for the first time now. Colin Blair, contact there, that's Colin Blair off sideways, and he's off, that's a very big off. And if you want to see a car going at 100 miles an hour in reverse, there you've seen it, Colin Blair spins, rolls, ends up on his side. Now he's parked there right on the crest of the hill. Marshall's running straight to him, I hope he's fine. That's the view from Ivan Muller, meantime, there's a little bit of contact with him, him and Jason Plato. Plato just cuts back, now James Thompson moves in. Now, I reckon Ivan Muller must be having some sort of a problem. He's falling way back behind James Thompson now and is really having to work to hold off Phil Bennett. No, he's not anymore. Phil is through. That all went wrong as they came out of the hairpin bend. He didn't have the momentum. Bennett did. But as you're right, Charlie, there's something wrong with Muller's box all at the minute. Yeah, he must be working really, really hard. I reckon he'll pit this lap, probably. Just crawling around. That's very disappointing for him as he worked very hard in race one and of course ultimately Jason Plato drove brilliantly and muscled his way back past Ivan yeah he does go into the pits you can see he's been crawling yeah and also you could just see there's some kind of smoke or something coming from the bottom of the car now whether that's the problem or just an auxiliary problem well this isn't the scheduled pit stop no but I think the teams just go through the motions of changing the front tires to take the strip off but I think they're going to spend a bit more time looking at this car yep up comes the bonnet Power steering fell off, so I tried during three laps to, um, to carry on, but uh, when the power steering goes off, it's impossible to turn. Now all these pit stops, of course, mean that Steve Soper, who has yet to pit in the Peugeot, is now our race leader. Now hang on, that Thompson's off. he has gone straight across. I've got a problem with the car. I don't know what it is. I've got a problem with the car. Gone. Well, it's really alarming for James Thompson. Here's a replay. Look what happened. Yes, and when he, he realized something went wrong there very quickly, we actually saw the brake lights come on before he went off. A big fight for James. Well, he's really got some work to do. I tell you what, because we've already seen a Van Muller retire with this problem. Now, look, he, almost as if he's trying to get himself comfortable here to muscle this car around. Well, what he needs to do now is steer the car really from his shoulders, not his arms. Front wheel drive without power steering, it's a nightmare. Real pressure now, meantime, in the production battle. Shedden in the focus, Graves turns in, and he's nailed him. Really big hit going into the hairpin. Shedden's still running, so is Graves. Graves is, well, that's one way to get through. Uh, it was a bit basic and a bit crude, but it's effective. Uh, but look, at there's the damage. Graves' car, that's going to not make it very far down this road. Uh, you'd have to say Graves is a bit unlucky there, though. I mean, it was quite a late cut from Shedden. Yeah, but you have to say also that Shedden probably found reverse gear, not second gear. Well, it hasn't worked, and Graves is off. Unbelievable. Down into Duffer's dip. Keep it rolling, son. Keep it rolling. Toes half the track back on with him. Kitty litter all over it. Down through Duffer's dip. Still 38 tonnes of gravel as he turns right into McIntyre's as well. Terrific Jason Plato. Up to take the chequered flag. Lovely stuff, Sunshine. And Phil Bennett, lights flashing as he comes up the hill. I don't know if that's in jubilation or relief. Well, we said at the start of the feature race it was tight at the top, and it's even tighter now. Have a look at that. Plato just in front of Muller, Thompson not far behind, and Phil Bennett in touch too. Vauxhall leading the team's championship, and not surprisingly, they've taken out the Manufacturers' Cup. Isn't that fantastic? So early in the year. And I tell you, it's down to these guys, Derek and Ian, and everybody out there, the drivers, and everybody at Vauxhall, so happy about this. And it's a tremendous fillet for us. Back in the Drivers' Championship, where the season was really hotting up, there was a win apiece for Muller and Plato at Croft. Here at Alton Park, Muller had taken the sprint race and was looking for a double in the feature race. The Frenchman was racing in third behind Jason Plato and Andy Prio. But trouble is never far away for a touring car driver. This is round 20. So it's Prio, then Plato, then Muller. Sober and Thompson almost side by side. Harvey and Tommy Erdos side by side as well in the Lexus and in the Alpha respectively. Prio moves to the left, down the hill. There is Harvey, there's Erdos. Down in, well at least they're both black. 
in case they lose any paint, but Harvey is through. <laughs> Tough stuff. Yes, well placed by Harvey. He had the advantage, Erdos recognized it. On your first lap, don't be a hero. Everyone stays in the race order, up across the strike for the first time. Andy Prio is leading this race. Of course, the rolling start much easier for Prio, but watch Muller in third place. He's leading the championship right now. He doesn't want Plato to claw back too many more points. Okay, Plato to the right, Muller's stuck to the left, Muller's on the grass, Muller's off! Sliding down the inside, the field is streaming down through Cascades now, it's got to be close, well, that was James Thompson just missing a bound, Muller. What an off. Well, that was scary. Let's see again what happened. Plato gets a good run off Old Hall, gets alongside Prio. Muller thinks he can go the long way round, but once on the grass, it is history. The car spins. Look at the tufts of grass and mud everywhere, back across the track, somewhere. James Thompson got through, how he missed him, I don't know. I don't think even Muller knew where he was. OK, race is finished for me. Thank you, Mr. Field. Now, here's a turn up for the box. Tommy Erdos in the Lexus is now leading. He's yet to pit, but this is the first time that Alexis has ever led a lap of the British Touring Car Championship as we see Jason Plato come out behind Steve Soper. Remember, Soper's pitted, Plato's pitted. The significance of that is that when all of the pit stops are run through, at the moment at least, it's Soper, Plato and Thompson. They've all pitted, that's the order, look at that. Thompson now climbing all over the back of Jason Plato. Thompson's been out a couple of laps, Plato's fresh out of the pits, Thompson challenging. What can he do? Cuts to the inside round the hairpin, up over the crest of the hill. Plato's moving him across, Plato cuts right across in front of us, now we're down the left-hand side, coming down towards Nickerbrook. Plato, where is he? he now he's moving back again, really defensive. I didn't like that move that Plato made on Thompson, it was a little bit unfair, but of course he is on those cool tyres, he's got to take his chances, otherwise Thompson will be through, and he will really, really struggle to get back ahead of Thompson. And that's Steve Soper, Steve Soper, the man who was leading this race, Smoke pouring out of the back of it. Remember, he pitted early, so he was effectively the man leading on the road. But at this stage, at least, he's still limping along. Although that's, he's slowing now, he's slowing now, coming down into Nickerbrook. Yeah, I think, in fact, it looks like the oil is about to be, uh, well, it's gone. There's no oil left. And Steve Super's pulled over and a very sad, but what a great drive from Super into retirement. Yeah, that is hugely disappointing, but what a great showing it was indeed. Jason Plato, luckiest guy since Ringo Starr, is now up in the lead. James Thompson in second position. And Steve Soper pausing by the side of the track to think what's happened to him. Jason was under some real pressure from James Thompson after the pit stops. Managed to see it off, and he comes across the line, banks the points, takes the win. James Thompson in second place. Well done, guys. Well done, guys. So Plato was now 10 points clear in the championship with his teammate and rival Muller, his nearest contender. Next up was Silverstone, and it was in the final stages of the feature race that Muller and Plato, these Vauxhall teammates, gave us the talking point of the season. Plato certainly cut the lead down. You can see it's halved in the space. Well, what is it, a few laps? And Plato now putting Muller under real pressure. Yeah, a bit of a wobble there for Muller after bridge, left-hander. This is his opportunity. Contact, though, Plato's through, contact with Muller and Plato. Last lap, Muller's wounded as he stopped. Still running, Jason Plato's very much still running. Yeah, but a heavy damage on that right front, the bumper in the front guard. Look, there you can see, those are the marks of Muller's car. Well, Jason Plato is rounding and taking the checkered flag. Oh, guys, right, right. Controversial win, James Thompson there in the second Vauxhall. He's come through into P2. Now, what can Muller do? Well, Muller is still running. Flying on a wing and a prayer. And Tom Boardman, oh, terrible, terrible stuff, has not made it, but covered himself in glory on the day. Muller has limped across the line and got out of the car. Well, you see him walking away, but the left front suspension heavily damaged. In fact, no steering control whatsoever. Just give him a couple of minutes, guys. The last few laps, he was really under pressure and struggling on the brakes. And then he just made, made a mistake at bridge, and that was my chance. So, a pretty unhappy podium for one of the Vauxhall drivers. 
I think I lost too many races this year for for stupid thing. Um, I was uh, very happy with the car all the race. I was looking after my tire the three last lap, and unfortunately, I had a, a small uh, engine cut uh, in bridge. And when the engine came back, phew, I had a big shunt. So that's it. Uh, anyone can uh, can watch TV and judge himself. And it's a beautiful day turned into evening. The stewards met for hours to consider that Plato Muller incident. Right, what they've said is um, they feel, albeit I don't agree, they feel an unfair advantage was gained, even though Avan had a misfire and an engine problem when he slowed dramatically at Bridge Corner, even though I was down the inside, and even though he could have given me a bit of room, they still feel an unfair advantage was gained and they've issued a 30-second penalty. As a professional driver, I have to take everything into account. And uh, as much as I want to appeal, I don't think I'm going to gain anything by it, so I'll take it on the chin. So James Thompson wins. Plato is relegated to third, and Ivan Muller closes the points gap to only five in a weekend eventful for the touring car men and the production drivers alike. After Muller won at Donington, it was all down to Brands Hatch. Plato beat Muller in the sprint, so in the final race of the season, Muller needed a win and to finish two places ahead of Plato to be champion. Plato just needed to hold his nerve in the atrocious conditions. Lights going to red there, green. Use away well now. Look, Plato's trying to get around the outside of Ivan Muller. The two blue boxels side by side. Muller's running him up the hill. There's the view from Jason's car. Now he's held him off, but in the process, he's left a hole a mile wide for Phil Bennett. There, that green one. Right in front of him, you can't really see a thing, can you? Muller is fended off. Bennett has got through. Muller's got what he needs behind him, which is Plato, but he's got two cars and valuable points in front of him. Now, can he get back past? Muller tippy-toeing down the inside, surfing his way past Phil Bennett, or is he? Side by side, we're on board with Plato and P4, about to turn left. Oh, that's so, so close. Phil Bennett doesn't give up easily, slips sideways, still in P3 as Muller, still in P4 as Plato. Someone's taken to the rough stuff. That was Paul O'Neill trying to take a shortcut and a very muddy one across the strike. You can't even see the start-finish line. Hughes opened up a furlongs gap. Great stuff from him. Muller lunging down the inside of Bennett. Can he do it? Yes, he has. Great stuff. Oh, and a tank slapper on the way through again. This is like water skiing in the whip, out wide. Now the ski boat, Bennett's down the inside. Muller thought that's exactly what Muller needs. Now Muller's in front. He's got a Bennett buffer behind him, then Plato. Wet wild stuff. Well, tremendous pass from Muller into Paddock Ben. Bennett came back. Now Plato's trying to elbow his way through. Get out of the way, Bennett. I'm in this championship. You're not. Now Hughes in trouble, I think. Muller really starting to pressure him. Rough try to run around the outside. Now he's down the inside. He's taken the W. Plato's off. Unbelievable. Plato's gone straight across there. Unforced error. Keep it moving, mate. Keep it moving. Stalled. I can't believe he's got it going again. I tell you, he's got all the luck going with him today. Most people will be in that bank, out of the race. His championship title hoops could be all over, but he's running again. Well, you couldn't kill him with a stick, could you? Now, here, let's have another look at what happened on board with him. Turns in, there's a river running across, he catches the curb, all of a sudden, the car goes sideways, now he floors the throttle, which is what you do in front wheel drive, then lifts off, the car spins harmlessly. Oh, how close can you get to that barrier and not touch it? Uh, hanging it together. Now, here's a but Muller, no, again! Ivan Muller for the second time has gone straight on. Well, I thought this was a touring car race at Brands Hatch. It's not ready, Cross. He did not lose position doing that. Hasn't done himself any favours skipping over the infield, but he is still in the lead of this race. He's still in the lead of this championship. Ah, John B&Q, this is his last touring car race. And he's found a place to moor. It's actually in a dangerous position. I wouldn't mind betting there'll be another safety car as we see a great big slither there from Plato just going down through Paddock Hill. Ben absolutely on it, driving so hard. Two places yet to make up. He needs to finish behind Ivan Muller to win the championship. That'll do it. He's in P4 now. Two more to go. And oh, there the safety car is out. But of course, Muller, he's got to worry about Plato and the safety car plays to Plato, not to Muller's advantage. Plato, of course, seventh on the road, but fourth in class, and those production cars ahead of him, he's going to get past in the blink of an eye. Now, look at all the water. Hey, look out of the front of a Muller's car. That looked like flames, I'm not sure. 
Look, look, out there. You can see right underneath that. That's a fire. Yes, it is. Now, I just wonder... Oh, Christ, it's... Michael Miller's got a fire on the front of his car. Okay, I have fire on the car. I have fire on the car. There you go, the marshals know it, he knows it. Yeah, maybe when he went across the grass at Surtees, he did do some damage to the bottom of the car that wasn't just bodywork. Devan Muller is still going, but this is exquisite torture. This is just horrible. And he's pulling off what an ignominious way to end a fabulous championship hunt. Um, you know, the condition was amazing, and um, just the chicane behind... Uh, one stage I, I, I had uh, aqua planning and I went a bit uh, on the on the curbs and probably that's putting an uh, oil leak or something like that and the fire comes step by step. Luck hasn't really been on your side this season. <laughs> no, not really. Not really at all. But it's like this, it's part of motor racing and we have to accept. Uh, I am very, very disappointed for, for the lads behind me here because uh, They've done a good job and uh, they should be on the podium with me. Big man. Yes, tough, tough situation. Both drivers really made this championship something to watch all year. Yep, I suppose it is time to uh, be the first to congratulate Jason Plato. He is the champion. Well done. Now, there's still a motor race to be run here and there's still a production championship to be won as well. Now, the position we've got here is that this man, Simon Harrison, all he has to do is keep it on the island and finish. James Kay, the only man who could beat him in the championship, is on the road. He's ahead of him on the road. But what Simon has to do is just keep it neat, hang it together, and the job's done. On board with Plato now. He still doesn't reckon the job's done. He's lining up Dan Eves. That's Dan ahead of us. Coming into Paddock Hill, having a look. He's still having a race. Yes, and what Plato's got now is that lovely rhythm a driver gets when things are working for you. Everything's just coming easy. Eve stays to the left, Plato just goes down the inside of the right hand, no problem at all. And now he's really got Phil Bennett ahead, puts the hand up, says, thanks, mate, no sweat. Plato want to duck down the inside into clearways, this is the last corner, Bennett looks like he's got it covered, he's not giving it away. No, he kept the tight line into clearways, and Plato said, OK, Phil, you can have the race, but I'm taking the championship. OK, well, that sounds pretty fair to me, everyone's a winner. Jason Plato's dad says, nicely done, son. Great win for Phil Bennett, great championship win for Jason Plato. At times I've been critical of some of his driving, but remember Jason Plato is an outstanding race driver. He and Muller have made a fantastic championship. Here, here, and what a fitting end. Phil Bennett cracks it for a win. Dan Eves makes it onto the podium, and Tom Ferrier in the top four as well. James Kay, seventh on the road, but Simon Harris in 10th position and the production champ. British touring car champion, 2001. Thanks very much. Yeah, thank you. Oh, it's been a long time coming, this. It has. It's been quite a season. Yeah, it has. I mean, I'm, you know, it's a shame I've been retired, but it's a shame I lost, you know, I got stuck on the aquaplane. So, but yeah, it's all over. I can go and have a drink now. But just thanks, you know, to everyone that's helped me yeah, over the last five years. And, you know, I have to thank Frank Williams for giving me my first opportunity. Um, yeah, and everybody. I'm a bit lost for words at the minute. And what a championship. Jason Plato, our 2001 champion. Evan Muller second, James Thompson third, and Phil Bennett in fourth. Dan Eves, best of the rest, if you like. Just ahead of Steve Soper, Tommy Erdos in the Lexus, and then Tim Harvey. And a big congratulations to Vauxhall Motorsport. Clear winners. The champion of 2001 wouldn't be defending his crown in 2002, which left Ivan Muller as one of the main pretenders. But he would be pressed by James Thompson, his Vauxhall teammate, and Matt Neal back in touring cars with Egg Sport. Brands Hatch was where the new 10 meeting season started. Matt Neal took the sprint, now for the feature race. It's a rolling start for the feature race, and Ivan Muller leading them round, coming through clear ways. And we're all set for the second round of the Green Flag British Touring Car Championship here at Brands Hatch. They wait till they come up to the line and then Muller floors the throttle on his Vauxhall Astra Coupe to set off in front once again. McNeil slotting into second place there. But remember, 
Matt Neal's car now some 42 kilograms heavier. That success ballast has been added to his car. He bounces over the curbs a little bit as he comes through Paddock Hill Bend. Oh, and there's another accident. Paul O'Neill hits the barrier. Same place we saw Mark Thomas off earlier on today. This time, it's Paul O'Neill at the start of the race, and he's obviously made contact with someone, but I'm not quite sure whom. Tom Chilton also in the gravel. Look at Mark Thomas challenging Tom Ball. They met each other again. There's not going to be much left of that car of Mark Thomas by the end of this meeting. Well, we've seen a lot of that yellow Honda normally because it's being hit by somebody. <laughs> well, James Thompson comes through. He's leading. Lights ablaze. Uh, Jimmy, it's H. Yes, Captain. Okay, Ivan will not attack you. Ivan will not attack you. Just bring the cars home. Bring the cars home. Okay. And it's James Thompson who just has one more corner to go to take his first win of the season. In fact, he took a win here last year as well, but this one will be even sweeter after all the problems he's had. James Thompson comes through to take victory. In 2002, the championship was beginning to open up. Four different winners for each of the first four rounds. After Ivan Muller took the sprint at Alton Park, there was an emotional first-time win for Paul O'Neill. At Thruxton, James Thompson made it two wins for the season, and when Muller won the feature race, the championship was dead level. Muller, Thompson and Neil all on 59 points. Then at Silverstone, MG burst onto the championship scene when Warren Hughes secured the team's first win. I'm not trying to be big-headed, but just the car was amazing for those conditions. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed at how well the car was. We thought we might have a, a bit of a problem with it raining at the last minute, but it uh, just shows what a good chassis the MG ZS is. It's a, just an amazing car. But the Vauxhalls weren't going to be kept off that podium for long. James Thompson took the feature race at Silverstone, while Matt Neal and Ivan Muller collected the spoils at Mondello Park. This is the feature race at Croft, round 12. A little mistake from Thompson, runs wide, yeah, and Muller gets inside him. So Muller, now, yeah, with a chance to get past there, and that's Thompson on our left, we're on board Andy Frio in third place, and there goes Muller, taking the lead from his teammate. Well, Thompson might have expected that, I think, with the lighter car for Ivan Muller in this race, but I'm afraid there's problems for Tom Chilton. They changed his engine, but there's some sort of oil leak that they just can't seem to cure now, and what a disappointment after getting it ready. Tom Boardman's off in the BMW, <laughs> he's flying across the grass, gets back on again. He's certainly in plenty of action today. He's knocked one of the tires loose. Oh, and I think that's caused problems for Dave Allen. I don't know if they made contact. It may just have been that the tires moved. Allen had nowhere to go, so he looks like he's set for retirement. And that's Thompson. Thompson going very slowly. He was running second. He's being passed by everybody. And there's obviously some problem with his car. Well, for Muller, it was a puncture. I don't know what the problem is here. Is it misfiring? Sounds like a misfire. Well, it could be. It could well be that Thompson has got some sort of engine problem because he, he's just not on the pace at all. And in fact, now our race leader, this is Muller. It's not Thompson. Thompson hasn't made it round yet. Muller's decided to come in at the earliest opportunity here, dives into the pit lane. Right, so they're looking for a good clean stop. He came in from the lead, quite a good advantage. One or two other cars coming in. Matt Neal coming in just... Oh, they've got a problem. They dropped it off the jack too fast. Now, finally, they can get it. Oh, and this car's coming down, nearly makes contact with Gareth Howell and with one of the Protons. Very close. Back with Norman Simon. Car bouncing around a little bit. Yeah, remember, this is the production class. They're not as highly modified as the touring class, and consequently, they look more like a standard car. Well, this doesn't look too good, does it? This is Matt Neal, and he's pulled right off. She's a gunner, mate. She's gone at the end of uh, the straight. Yeah, we saw that. Bad luck, bad luck about that. Did your best. Well, it is the last lap. It looks good for Rebound Muller, and he's going to take the chequered flag as he comes through this time. Muller wins the feature race here at Croft with Andy Frio taking his best result of the season and Honda's best result on their return to the British Touring Car Championship under the new regulation.
Congratulations then for Honda. But still Vauxhall were dominating the 2002 championship. Then at Snetterton, first James Thompson, then Ivan Muller notched up wins. Then at Brands Hatch, the MGs had their day again as Vauxhall pressed the self-destruct button. Warren Hughes leads them round. It should be Aaron Slight alongside him, but that will give a clear run to Colin Turkington, who's the first of the two Tim Atomic Kitten cars on the grid this time. Here we go, Warren Hughes takes the green flag. We're underway for the feature race, 40 laps of the Indy circuit at Brands Hatch, and Warren Hughes versus Anthony Reid once again. It's Hughes in front, Prio quite a long way down after his poor qualifying session has a lot of work to do. The Knock Hill winner is going to have to fight his way through the order. Hughes versus Reid, there's Turkington and Thompson trying to drive all the way around the outside, has to make this race count after the disaster of race one. It's still Anthony Reid from Warren Hughes, Gareth House staying very close to them, and the three MGs up there. But can they make it an all-MG podium this time? That would really be quite something. Into the pits comes Ivan Muller now, and Tom Chilton also heading into pit lane. So, the Vauxhall Motorsport boys go to work. Yeah, quite a few cars coming in now for a, the mandatory tyre stop. Quite a good tactic to come in early, just in case there is a pace car situation later. Muller gets away there a bit quicker than uh, James Thompson, but not a particularly quick time. Now, let's see where this puts them relative to one another. Here comes Thompson along the top straight. Where's Muller? Where's Muller? There's Muller! He's on the inside, he's ahead! Now, Thompson's got the speed. He's got to try and carry it through Paddock Hill Bend, get round the outside of Muller, and try and move ahead of his teammate once again. Up the hill towards Druitt. It's going to be close run thing into the corner. Oh, and Muller's locked up. He's taken Thompson off. He's that, taken him into the gravel. That is an amazing incident that really shouldn't happen between team, teammates. It does happen, I should know. I've, I've had a few uh, run-ins with my teammates at Brands Hatch. Uh, and Thompson must be feeling absolutely gutted there. He's uh, lost the opportunity yet again to score points this weekend. Anthony Reid ahead of Aaron Slight, and Slight getting a real masterclass in touring car racing from some of the most experienced competitors around. And Slight just a little slowed down at Paddock Hill Bend, and Muller's now coming up the inside, trying to get into Druid. Slight tries to shut the door, he can't. Muller squeezes through, and there goes Andy Prio around the outside. Uh, this is the most amazing touring car race. Look, they're swapping places, uh, one corner to the next. This is fantastic stuff. They're all still on the track and uh, there's a very disconsolate looking James Thompson. I'm surprised he's even bothered to watch the race. Yes, uh, he's not a happy man at all, scoring no points here at Brands Hatch this weekend, but MG scoring maximum points. Two wins to MG. Warren Hughes comes through to take the victory in the feature race. Second place, his best result of the season for Alan Morrison, and a good third place there for Tim Harvey. Paul O'Neill comes across the line in fourth, and there's our production winner. It's Norman Simon in the BMW. Anthony Reid just holding on to fifth place after that tremendous tussle over the last few laps. But Warren Hughes, well, he's over the moon with that victory. Well done, mate. Excellent drive. Oh, that is amazing. Fantastic job. Brilliant. So at Donington Park, the title had come down to the wire once again. Would James Thompson be able to ruin the Frenchman's dreams for yet another year? It was effectively between Thompson and Muller, and it was Thompson who made the better start in the sprint race. So up to the last corner, and James Thompson has done exactly what he needed to do in this first race. That is to beat Ivan Muller. He's got the benefit of one or two cars between himself and Muller as well as he crosses the line. James Thompson wins the sprint race at Donington Park, and he knows how important that is. Good trademark touring car race really, lots of overtaking, a bit of contact. I've been on the receiving end of most of it the whole year, so he uh, rubbed a few panels in that one and uh, yeah, very glad to hold on to, uh, to the win at the end. So this full field of cars, this is it. This is the championship decider. And I wonder what's going on in the mind here of James Thompson. He's keeping a close eye on Ivan Muller. Muller studiously ignoring Thompson and looking at the start lights, which is an interesting one. We're all set to go, the feature race will decide the outcome of the title, and it's Andy Brio from pole position who gets away well. James Thompson drops in behind Muller, in fact, Morrison gets ahead of him as well, so it is Andy Prio ahead of Matt Neal, Muller up into third place, then it's Alan Morrison, and James Thompson down into fifth place, but don't forget he does have that ten-point advantage coming into this race. Well, my gut feeling this time round is it's an intentional ploy to stay behind and just attract 
Muller, but uh, unlike the first time where he definitely made a mistake. Let's just take a look at that start again. You can see from the overhead that Thompson on the outside of the second row really doesn't get away well, so Muller has an easy time of it. Yes, I think, uh, as, as we said there, that uh, it probably was Thompson being intentional and just trying to play it safe. So, Andy Prio leads, Matt Neal in second. It's all about what Ivan Muller can do now and whether James Thompson can stay with him. Oh, Phil Bennett had a spin up there in the background by the look of it. And we've got an Alfa Romeo going wide. That's Alan Blanco, who's taken a wild trip across the gravel. <laughs> Keeps it off the tyres by the matter of a few centimetres. And he's still trying to find his way back on track. Meanwhile, Andy Prio leads, battle for second. Here comes Ivan Muller. Muller has to go for it now. He's got down the inside of Matt Neal. Bit of door rubbing. Oh, and he's gone sideways. Neal hits him in the door as well. Muller not really giving Matt Neal much space to work in. And that's pushed Muller down a couple of places. This battle for second is still on. I thought Morrison had already got it. Now he does just get it as he moves ahead into the S's. Look at Anthony Reid next up. Then it's Ivan Muller. Paul O'Neill, he hits Paul O'Neill. So Muller involved in more contact as Howell tries to get past them both. And James Thompson still holding a watching brief right behind, making sure that Muller's not too many places ahead of him. Oh, look at this. Where can they all fit into? I don't know. They're all trying to get round the Melbourne hairpin together. Yes, it's not really going well for Ivan Muller, is it? It's a tough battle in the mid pack at the moment. Dan Eves is out as well. He's got problems. OK, guys, the race is finished for me. The suspension is banned. I come in, it's over. Oh, and Tom Chilton. Tom Chilton hits the wall. Ivan, where's the suspension broken? Front, rear, left or right? Front, right, I think. Well, Ivan Muller into the pits. This is it. This is the championship being decided right now. He cannot win this race now. And they're still looking around the front of the car. Well, it's disaster for the second year in a row for Ivan Muller. Ivan has finished his race and been put into the garage. Does that mean what I think it means? Yes, it does, mate. Just enjoy yourself and stay out of trouble, all right? Well done. So Thompson celebrating already, whether he finishes or not. Here comes Morrison, the checker flag is ready, and Alan Morrison wins his first ever touring car race in the top class. Great effort from him, as looking back for our second place finisher, there he is, Warren Hughes, and Hughes working his way up from a lowly grid position to take second position here at Donington. A great end to his season as well. And in the background, the battle for third, Andy Brio back on turns with Thompson. He seemed to have some sort of intermittent problem that dropped him back, and he almost got third again on the line. But in fact, it goes to James Thompson. Alan Morrison is the winner of the last race, but James Thompson is British Touring Car Champion. So huge disappointment once again for Ivan Muller. But nobody could begrudge James Thompson his 2002 triumph. Well... I don't know what happened at the start, all hell broke loose. We were, Ivan and I were at the front, then we were at the back. And our strategy really was just to, to match Ivan, because 10 point advantage uh, after the first race, just had to match him. <laughs> I hadn't been so far down uh, the, the pack for ages. And literally, we, I was just uh, thinking, crikey, it's getting a bit tough, as you can see, sporting a fair bit of damage. Um, and then next minute, Ivan was tussling, I was tussling, we were banging wheels, and then Coming out of this corner, I saw Ivan pull off, and you know, at that point in time, I had a sneaking suspicion it was all over. That's 12 years of the best tin top action in the world. Ten different drivers took the honours in these years, with the rivalry and racing as intense as ever. The championship has evolved and continues to change, but there's one thing for sure if you want wheel to wheel, wing mirror to wing mirror, bumper to bumper racing, keep watching the British Touring Car Championship.